912 horsepower on a Duramax with stock internals say what? I'm Jay and welcome to the Banks Insider for the week of May 1st, 2020. New produce alert! Wait, you guys <laughs> screwed up product. New product alert! The Black Ops Ram Air rear differential cover is now in stock. Here's a fun tidbit. It was YouTuber Duramax Rhino, goes by DMAX Rhino, that first introduced us to the concept of that stealthy look when he received one of our very first covers produced. Rhino was given a bare aluminum piece, so he colored it how he wanted to. I didn't really like the super crazy diff cover colors, he said. To me, black is the way to go with these kinds of things. The San Diego native took the cover to Swift Powder Coat in El Cajon, California, who coated the cover in a satin black, then polished the bank's logo down to its original aluminum. True to their name, they swiftly gave him the finished piece in less than a day. As soon as we saw the black look, we all fell in love here at Banks, and that's how the Black Ops version was born. It went into production almost immediately, and it is now finally available today in limited quantity. The patented Ram Air diff cover fits GM 14-bolt American axle rear ends with 11.5 and 11.8 inch gears. How is it different than other covers and why do you need it? The patented Ram Air scoops and the incredible amount of surface area help it cool five times better than Mag High Tech and other flat back covers. Plus, the fluid dynamics are nearly perfect inside. We can't say as much for the other guys. Get yours today at bankspower.com. It's been a few weeks since our last episode of Killing a Duramax, but it's been worth the wait. Episode 12 finds Gail Banks pushing the L5P engine to 912 horsepower with stock internals. Up to this point, mods have only been made to the exterior of the engine, which include a Precision 7675 turbo, fabricated stainless steel uppipes, and a collector, turbine pedestal, SNS 50% over injectors, as well as twin big ass air filters feeding directly into the compressor. The exhaust now exit the turbo via a long conical diffuser to a five inch exhaust pipe. In the previous episode, Gale pushed the engine to 852 horsepower, but the EGT was way too high for comfort. And based on the data, he surmised that he could reduce temps and liberate horsepower by ridding the engine of unwanted back pressure and pumping losses. His theory turned out to be spot on. Episode 12 finds Gale and Aaron pushing past their 1600 degree EGT safe zone all the way to 1650, where much to their delight, they eked out the 912 horses. In the video, Gale teaches two valuable measurements, engine scavenge ratio and boost to back pressure ratio. Watch and learn. We've got another episode of Killing a Duramax coming next week, so be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and Facebook feed so you don't miss it. In this week's R&D update, we took a look at the latest pre-production Banks Pedal Monster circuit boards and what makes them different. See, the Pedal Monster is an excellent example of the relentless pursuit of product perfection here at Banks. Wow, say that 10 times fast. <laughs> Essentially done and ready for consumer use months ago, Banks instead decided to expand the test pilot program by getting the product in as many different vehicles as possible and really listen to the feedback from the testers. Improvements to calibrations, throttle responsiveness, and additional features have been added since then. The new version will connect to the OBD2 diagnostics port, which will provide a constant 12 volt power supply to the module for uninterrupted steady power, which will circumvent problems seen on many other throttle sensitivity devices because they pull power right from the pedal plug. And in many vehicles, we'll have reverse lockout, which will prevent you from speeding in reverse. For those of you that have been hearing about the Pedal Monster since SEMA last year, I can assure you it's been worth the wait. I've been driving with one for the past few weeks and I can tell you that there is no going back to stock because it sucks. Next up is our dealer spotlight, where we check in with Mike Beer of MB Auto and Accessories. Mike has had to travel quite a path to get to where he is now from being on the road constantly for 18 years doing trade shows for an exhaust manufacturer. After the birth of his daughter, Mike decided enough with the traveling already. His next step was to build an online site, try his hand on selling at eBay and Amazon. And to his surprise, his gamble paid off. His garage, which started out as his center of operations, quickly expanded into his attic where he stuffed parts to be sold. It actually got to the point where his ceiling was bowing under the weight of all the parts above him. Hey, Ron. Hey, Billy. He ended up in an old GM storage facility that proved to be much needed space, but 
little else. There was no bathroom in the building. He had a heater that barely worked. Well, it did when it wanted to. Poor ventilation, and it was dimly lit, and it only had one power outlet. That sounds like a bad spot, my friend. After another two moves and having his brother join him in the business, MB Auto stands today in a 6,000 square foot building, complete with a great showroom and a bay where they provide installation service for all the products they sell. From traveling abroad to working out of a garage to this beautiful building, MB Auto and Truck Accessories inhabits now, Mike has proved that hard work definitely does pay off. If you're anywhere near Indianapolis, stop by for a visit. In our fan focus, we see yet another example of customer ingenuity, adapting Banks products to something other than their intended application. Such is the case with an L5P Ram Air intake that's being adapted to a supercharged gasoline V8 in owner Eric Pena's red 2017 GMC. The stock 5.3 liter with its 6L80 six-speed auto is being swapped with a 6.2 and an eight-speed 8L90 from a donor Denali. Breathing extra vitality into the engine will be a port of 2650 Eaton supercharger, which has also been modified with port injection. Eric is adapting the L5P Ram Air intake, as he put it, because I want the most unrestricted air to that blower that I can possibly get, and Banks makes the biggest filter that I could find. I also wanted it to be as factory looking as I could get. To further the factory effect, Eric is using a hood from a Duramax powered GMC truck because the integrated hood scoop connects directly to the Banks Ram Air intake, making it functional, and it supplies the supercharger with an abundance of cool air. The whole point of Eric's truck is for it to be a daily driven sleeper stalking the mean streets of Corpus Christi, Texas. But there's no end to his GMC obsession. Eric also has a four wheel drive GMC drag truck that he also Frankenstein from various parts. This black beauty throws down 1800 horsepower at the track. And what does he pull the drag truck with? You guessed it, another GMC. A new Duramax L5P. Eric, it sounds like you have an addiction. Next up at our time machine, we fly around the world at hyperspeed Superman style to reverse the rotation of the Earth and travel to 2006. As Banks' negotiations for the distribution of the Duramax engine progressed, General Motors had the idea to see how Banks would be able to take care of special vehicle builders providing a parts package and support for their needs specifically. One such customer was Brahma Motorsports of Ashland, Oregon. They had signed a deal with Ariel Limited to manufacture the Ariel Atom here in the US. Hmm, sound familiar? This is an extremely lightweight car, tipping the scales at only 1,350 pounds, completely outfitted. It was originally powered by a Honda K20A engine fitted with a supercharger. Unable to secure a deal with Honda for the engines, Brahma approached GM for a solution, which happened to be Banks. Creating a complete bill of materials and parts, Banks provided a potent two liter supercharged Ecotec that was found in the Saturn Ion Redline and Chevy Cobalt SS. A stout five speed manual gearbox with limited slip, the ECM, injectors, half shafts, exhaust components, and a litany of other parts from the GM bin and Banks own campus. The car was available in three levels of tuning, 200, 250, and 300 horsepower. When tested by GM themselves, the level two 250 horsepower version blasted from zero to 60 in just 2.8 seconds. One of the car's most famous owners was none other than Jay Leno. When he found out that Banks was involved, he secured the very first one and wrote an extensive review in Popular Mechanics. Although Brahma only sold a little over 130 cars before focusing their attention on making electric motorcycles, the Ariel Atom still stands as a speed freak's dream, and a testament to the fact that Banks has always been a capable and proven powertrain integrator. So stay glued to our Facebook and Instagram feeds, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up on the latest goings on here at Banks. We're still here, and we're pumping out performance.